and one of the most cinematic techniques, the rack focus. A rack focus refers to when the focus of a lens is changed during a shot. Therefore, something that was once in focus becomes out of focus, and something that was out of focus is now in focus. On professional film sets, this is done by the first assistant camera operator. But when crew and gear is limited, you can easily pull off this technique yourself as long as you have a lens that can be manually adjusted for focus. To better understand racking focus, we need to first discuss the concepts of aperture and depth of field. Aperture refers to the opening of a lens's diaphragm which allows the passing of light and is measured in units referred to as f-stops. A more open aperture means a lower f-stop number, which results in more light entering the lens. A more closed aperture means a higher f-stop, which results in less light entering the lens. In addition to the passing of light, aperture also affects the depth of field. Depth of field refers to the distance between the nearest and furthest points that are in focus. A deep depth of field is a result of a high f-stop and allows for greater distances to be in focus. A shallow depth of field is a result of a low f-stop and allows for less distance to be in focus. Take a look at this famous shot from Citizen Kane. Notice how every character in the room is in focus in addition to the boy playing outside. This is a very deep depth of field. Now have a look at this shot. Notice how the character in the foreground is in sharp focus while the character in the background is blurry. This is a much more shallow depth of field. And this is a very shallow depth of field. Performing a rack focus with a shallow depth of field is much more noticeable because something that was once very blurry is now in focus. Let's take a look at two examples from movies. Watch how the rack focus with a shallow depth of field is much more dramatic. The focal length of a lens also greatly affects the look of a rack focus. Higher focal lengths compress distance and therefore make the rack focus much more conspicuous. So why use a rack focus? In film and television, rack focuses range from barely noticeable to extremely obvious and eye-catching. A rack focus tends to go unnoticed when it's used to simply keep a subject in focus. Watch here as the two characters stay in focus as they approach the camera. Now pay attention to the light in the background and you'll notice it gradually falling out of focus. This is a necessity of filmmaking and it feels natural. Therefore, we tend to not register these types of adjustments in focus. For the sake of comparison, here are two examples of a character approaching the camera without any adjustment in focus. These moments don't feel natural and lend a sense of uncertainty. Rack focuses also work great for conversations where one character is placed in front of the other. Racking back and forth between each character is a simple and effective way to film the scene. Again, the racking back and forth doesn't call attention to itself. But more thoughtful rack focuses can be used during conversations to convey different feelings. Watch how the two rack focuses during this exchange from Sunshine lack consistency and force us to be a little unsure of the situation. Just to make it absolutely clear, there's no way we're going to do that. Do I have to spell it out for you? A rack focus can even be used for the sake of visual humor. Watch in these two examples as the joke is revealed by bringing a character into focus. Come on, Cap. I speak for the rest of the board and Mr. Wayne in expressing our own excitement. But perhaps the best function of a rack focus is to simply divert our attention from one thing to another. When watching the screen, we naturally focus on whatever is, well, in focus, and we typically tune out everything that is out of focus. A rack focus merely guides our eyes to where the filmmaker would like us to look. But much more obvious rack focuses can be used to grab our attention and establish significance or gravity. This concept makes the rack focus a favorite for scenes involving guns. Racking from the gun to the character, or vice versa, visually conveys the magnitude of the situation. Showing us that something has some sort of significance is the perfect task for a rack focus. When an object transforms from blurry to sharp, it naturally grabs our attention. Take this scene from Whiplash, where a rack focus reveals the literal blood, sweat, and tears that the character put into his performance. Like a rack focus can grab our attention, it can also show us that something has grabbed the character's attention. A rack focus can show us a moment of realization. No. Swing away. Or it can help to visualize heavy consequence.
Like with all cinematic techniques, it's equally important to ask ourselves when we shouldn't use a rack focus. Let's take the Florida Project for example. Director Sean Baker often chooses to focus on the children rather than the action in order to establish subjectivity. Not racking to the action in scenes like this one places us in the unsure position of the child. Or take this scene from Brokeback Mountain. Choosing to stay focused on Jake Gyllenhaal's character brilliantly communicates his forbidden desire. Racking to Heath Ledger's character would essentially ruin the tension. And in this scene from 12 Years a Slave, the children playing in the background remain in focus as the character being hanged in the foreground is blurry. The lack of a rack focus brutally communicates helplessness. Whether it's extremely obvious or barely noticeable, a rack focus is an essential tool for thoughtful filmmaking. With a wide variety of uses, you can undoubtedly incorporate rack focuses into your production to make it even better. Thank you.